Hello, in this video we're going to talk about febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reaction. The febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reaction is manifested by a rise in temperature of 1 degree Celsius or 2 degrees Fahrenheit or more occurring in association with transfusion and not having any other explanation. It usually occurs as a result of reaction to patients' antibodies directed against donor leukocytes or platelets. Febrile reactions occur in only 1% of transfusions. Repeated reactions are uncommon. Such reactions can occur immediately or within 1 to 2 hours after transfusion is complete. So, signs and symptoms of febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reactions are fever, increase in body temperature to greater than 1 degree Celsius or 2 degrees Fahrenheit, chills, headache, and possibly vomiting. Let's take a quick look at what exactly causing the rise in temperature in this febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reaction. So, antibodies that are already present in the patient blood against antigens on the surface of donor leukocytes and platelets will bind to the donor antigens and cause the reaction. As you can see, patients who have multiple transfusions may form these antibodies after several transfusions. This makes this patient more susceptible to develop a febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reaction. Also important to note that donor red blood cells are spared and allowed to stay in the patient. So patient's antibodies bind to donor antigens and complement proteins will bind to antibodies. And other cells will be activated releasing interleukin-1, interleukin-6, tumor necrosis factor, and prostaglandins, which in turn will release of other cytokines from the donor, such as pyrogens. Pyrogens will stimulate hypothalamic nucleus to increase metabolism and raise patient's temperature. So now let's take a look at interventions that can be done for febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reaction. So we will stop the transfusion and initiate a transfusion reaction workup. We'll change the administration set and administer through the new line uh, so 0.9 sodium chloride to keep the vein open. We'll notify the licensed independent practitioner and the blood bank and institute transfusion reaction protocol. We'll monitor vital signs will administer antipyretic agents as ordered, maybe Tylenol. Uh, another transfusion unit may be safely infused once the symptoms subside. So it's important to mention that the remainder of implicated components should not be transfused. Once we stopped it, we should send it to the blood bank for the workup and we will use a new uh, a blood bag uh, to in continue infusion. In order to prevent this uh, reaction, the febrile non hemolytic transfusion reaction, patient who experience repeated se severe febrile reactions may benefit from leukocyte reduced components, uh, and blood components that are being treated, uh, irradiated, and leukocytes are inactivated or destroyed. So you have just made it to the end of the video. If you found the video useful, please click that like button. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you for watching and I wish you great success.